a super slippery stream bed, the perfect EMTB climb. Now, your ability to conquer it or not will depend partly on tire pressure. Now, if you look in the MTB media of what's the perfect MTB tire pressure, you will find a ton of answers. However, what's the perfect EMTB tire pressure is a more difficult question to answer. Hey look, I'm sure most of us will have lost traction and spun out at some time on our e-bikes on a slippery climb or slope. And a lot of that time it's either down to technique or simply the power from your motor. But the good news is that lowering the pressure in your rear tire will gain you uh, traction on a climb. But the question is, how low can you actually go without losing control on the descents? Now finding the best pressure for an MTB is a tricky question, we will not deny that, but it all depends on your weight, the tyres you're using, the type of riding you're doing, for example downhill or cross country, and very importantly, the ground conditions. The good news is that there will be an optimum tyre for sure, and that's because tyres come in different widths, structure, tread pattern and of course compound. Every single different tyre will give you different results in terms of control. So why on earth then, you might ask, would you want to lower your pressures? Well, the simple answer is grip. It's as simple as that. And even a low profile, less aggressive tread pattern and a narrow width with a hard compound will perform better on a climb if you lower that pressure down to say 15, 10, or even lower than that. However, if you mount a soft compound, large volume tire with a good aggressive tread pattern and lower the tire pressures, you'll be amazed how much control you'll have on a climb such as this. Okay, how are we gonna do this? Uh, well, first of all, a few considerations I need to make you guys aware of. First of all is, uh, I did mention that you can run low pressures in hard compound, low profile tires. Just because you can doesn't mean you should because if you're tackling technical terrain on a full suspension bike, those tires simply aren't made for that. Secondly, you're gonna to need to have a tire pump, this very dinky little one I got here. I think tubeless is gonna be far better for you than a tube tire, because there's gonna be less um, chance of you pinch flatting the tire. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're lowering the tire pressure on a climb, even though you might get more traction, when you go downhill, it's gonna mean that a low profile tire, sorry, low pressure tire might fold a bit in the corners and just make you out of control. So another factor is the sidewall support of your tire, the strength of the sidewall, the, the kind of structure of it is massively important. Okay, 32 PSI and, ooh, a bit of traction brake there. I can already feel that I'm bouncing around a bit more and uh, little mini traction brakes as I'm going up the hill and that has the added effect of bouncing my feet off the pedals and some rocks here, hold on. Oh, spinning out a bit there. I just feel I gotta keep, I gotta keep a higher momentum when I'm in a higher tire pressure. And it's still not bad, but could be better, I think. Okay, 32 PSI. I wouldn't say it was perfect comfort. I think the control wasn't as good as it could be. Still not bad because the tire is large volume with an aggressive tread pattern, but I think I'm gonna now take it down to 15, 10 maybe. I mean, like I said, just because, um, just because we can let the air out doesn't mean you should necessarily run it at super low tire pressures, but I think what it might do is give an insight into what you are capable of on your e-mountain bike. So let's go down to, Let's go on a 10, shall we? Well, it's all relative now. Louis behind the lens there said, uh, that tire feels rock solid. Well, it's not, I can assure you, there is 10 PSI in there. And what happens, look, when you push down on the tire, it gives you a nice flat contact patch on the ground, just like a motorcycle trials tire would do. I mean, those guys run probably like three or four PSI. So 10 PSI is pretty heavy. Boom. Okay, run number two. I've now lowered the rear tire pressure to 10 PSI in my Pirelli Scorpion. So uh, let's see the results. Okay, 10 PSI. Let's go looking for trouble and slidiness. There's number one. Rock two coming up. Now the trouble with climbing on e-bike is you, there's a tendency to keep a high tempo because there's a fear of spinning out and breaking traction. The great thing with low tire pressure is it allows you to pick your way up a climb. You can have a lower heart rate. You can 
work your way, pick your lines. It's just simply a better way to tackle climbs. Look at that rock there. I mean, literally just crawling through it. Now this is where the strong sidewall of the tire comes important. Even though I'm 10 PSI and 90 kilos, I'm not bottoming it out on the rim. So slow it down, I can give a breather, which means I can then tackle the trickier sections, like I've got one coming up here. Slippy rock here, no problem. Wow, so much grip. Okay, so 10 PSI, I mean, okay, you might not normally run 10 PSI, but what we're gonna do now is see the impact of high and low tire pressure when you start hitting the downhills. So we've seen that low tire pressures aid your control and traction in slippy tech climbs. However, what about when things get hard and fast? Now, this is where uh, having the correct pressure in the system is key. So you need correct pressure on your fork and also in your tires, because when you compress into a hard corner like this, something is gonna give. So if you've got tire pressures which are maybe less than 15 PSI, I guarantee you that the tire is gonna deform and kick you out of shape. So let's have a look at the difference between 30 and 10. Now, of course, on a normal ride, an 80 to 90 kilo rider with a tough tire, then you're looking at 21 PSI front and 24 PSI rear. You can, of course, go less pressure for downhill casing tires or more pressure for thinner tires. But if you're faced with a long one hour technical climb or indeed a world level power stage, you could make your life easier by lowering the pressure. Hitting the downhill really does hammer home that a pressure good for best climbing might not be the best for descending. Having said that, strong sidewalls will support you far better than thin ones. So, unless you want to carry a pump and or a CO2 canister to fine tune on every section, then working on a best fit overall pressure for your tires is the best solution. Still, it was great fun dropping the single figures just for the hell of it. I was down to six and a half PSI in that corner. I genuinely believed that I'd pull the tire off the rim, but not only did it keep traction, but it, uh, the support wasn't that bad. I mean, granted, if, you, if I was to be a World Cup racer or someone riding a lot faster, I probably might do, but I think if you go into like rooty, rocky ground in six and a half PSI, it's gonna be game over, I would imagine. But that's all credit to the uh, stiff sidewalls on the Pirelli Scorpion. So I think in summary, Lower pressure does help you climb. And I think what you need to do as a rider is go out and experiment, take your pump in the woods, try different tire pressures and try to get the optimum balance front and rear. Obviously we didn't do the front tire today. Front and rear, which is a good mixture, enabling you to decline the technical climbs and also to hold, have good pressure in the system and support when you're going down the hill. Folks, uh, any questions on tires? Any tire questions, just fire them at me. And uh, yeah, get out on the trail. And guess of a pump. Also, this pump has got a shock pressure setting as well, so it's ideal. See you next time.